Video game characters square off against the Teen Titans. It's Wreck-It Ralph versus Big Hero 6 on Movie Feuds. They're not really the Teen Titans. I wish they were the Teen Titans. John C. Riley was the last guy I expected to play a big, lovable Disney character, but after seeing Wreck-It Ralph multiple times, I wouldn't want it any other way. The same could be said about the crass, talking comedian Sarah Silverman as Vanellope. She's a spunky and adorable outcast who can't even race in her own game. The supporting players are just as entertaining, with 30 Rock's Jack McBrayer playing Felix and Jane Lynch once more outshining everyone around her as Calhoun. She's a tough but internally wounded soldier who's afraid to let anyone get in close. Close. Glenn Close. I had no idea Firefly's Alan Tydick was King Candy and that Ed O'Neill had a small role as Mr. Litwick, the arcade store supervisor, until I did a little IMDB scroll. Let's find some of the other... This is a scroll. Find some of the other supporting cast. What really puts Wreck-It Ralph over the top for me, though, is the cameos by all the classic game characters I grew up with. You got Sonic, Eggman, Slash, Dr. Robotnik, Ken, Raoo, Raoul, Ryu, and there's Pac-Man, Paperboy, Bowser, the boss from Altered Beast, the list goes on. Big Hero 6 had plenty of fun and interesting characters too, with the largest draw coming from Baymax. He's voiced by another 30 Rock alum, Scott Adsit. Then there's our main protagonist, Hero, played by Ryan Potter. Uh, not to be confused with Harry Potter, who's a fictional character in a line of books, movies, uh, video games, etc. Nobody was confused by that. The rest of the cast shows up around the 30 minute mark, and even though I saw this film in 3D, they were all pretty one dimensional. There's the overly neat wasabi, the bubbly Taylor Swift, I mean Honey Lemon, the cosplay dragon lover Fred, and the tough engineer Gogo. They're all pretty enjoyable, but the one on ones we get with Hero and his brother, and Hero and his robot pal, are the real draws. Wreck-It Ralph follows the journey of our title character as he tries to break free from his bad guy label. He doesn't want to be bad anymore. And although his bad guy anonymous group is helping, it's not enough. He needs to win a medal. This takes Ralph on a journey spanning multiple games, including a Call of Duty, Halo-esque first-person shooter, to an uber-bubbly kart racing game. I would describe it as Candyland meets Mario Kart. There are some neat touches along the way and some definite thought was put into this little world Disney created. The movie tugs at the heartstrings almost carelessly. Since at the time of this feud the movie is just hitting theaters, I'm going to refrain from spoilers. But Hero does not seem to have an easy going life, we'll just, we'll just say that much. What does come easy, however, is being pretty much perfect at everything else. The kid is ridiculously smart. He can design robots, vehicles, artificial intelligence, program advanced software, upgrade code in a matter of minutes, and all sorts of other crazy crap I can't even think of. This works for and against the film in my eyes, as there is no ceiling to what Hero can conjure up and build. I don't expect gritty realism, but at least give it some sense of reality. He eventually attends college at a very young age and forms his team of heroes. Honestly though, the hero part could have been scrapped altogether and I would have been fine. Watching him meet and interact with Baymax and form a friendship is the movie. That's all I needed. It's very reminiscent of How to Train Your Dragon, complete with a flying montage. Once the superhero team is formed, things get pretty run of the mill. Hero 6 may have two more years of polish on Wreck-It Ralph, I don't know what this was but the 2012 film still looks fantastic. Wreck-It Ralph has a very clever art style that's a bit boxier than a typical animated flick, veering a bit closer to Madagascar but with much more detail. The animation is what really sets it above the standard. Game mascots move just like they would in the original incarnations. Don and Tapper are my favorites. Don is such a douchebag, but I love the guy. Just, just want to give him a bear hug. Ugh. Uh, uh. Big Hero 6 looks incredible, and the clever mashup known as San Francisco gives our eyes something truly awe-inspiring to feast upon. There are a lot of different action set pieces, ranging from a car chase to a final fight on top of a building being ripped to shreds. There's plenty of new scenery about, and I think that's one place where Wreck-It Ralph kind of stumbles a bit. As creative as Wreck-It Ralph is, I still couldn't help but wish we had just one more gaming environment. When can I see you again? Henry Jackman's the composer on... 
both of these pictures. <laughs> yeah. Ralph is light and poppy, while Hero 6 sticks with more of the traditional superhero Avengers-style tone. Owl City recorded When Can I See You Again specifically for Ralph. It's a fun and upbeat song that proved to me that Owl City has, in fact, one song I can stand listening to. Big Hero 6 gets its own custom song from pop rock artist Fall Out Boy. I said that intentionally because someone in the comments is going to be pissed and defend to the death that they're a punk rock group and not a punk pop group. It's been fun, but now I've got I loved Wrecked Ralph. I still love the movie after seeing it a half dozen times. There are so many little easter eggs peppered throughout this wonderful world. It's also probably the closest thing we have to a good video game flick until the sequel hits. It's imaginative, it's inspiring, it's got a great group of pixelated friends we can journey with for a while. Big Hero 6 is no slouch and it does have a Disney level of quality one comes to expect. However. It's very by the books. Baymax is a wonderful creation for sure, but in a spoiled world that's already given us wallies and toothlesses, it's hard to keep going back to that same well. And this, kids, is where I give my call to action. I gave you my takes on these movies, now it's your turn. Pop some comments in below, vote for your favorite. Wreck-It Ralph vs. Big Hero 6. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Oh. Side note, there is a frozen easter egg in Big Hero 6. Uh, a Hans statue gets blown to smithereens by Baymax in the courtyard when he's training. There you go, frozen reference, subscribe. Because frozen.